that my parents were lucky enough to be since they moved up here from the Bronx. I know this isn't a comprehensive list, but I'd especially like to thank Alice, Phyllis, the Meehans, the Cassidy's, McCoy's, Henry's, Michael Sullivan, all of those other people that have supported my parents with kindness and friendship throughout the years. I'd like to conclude the gratitude uh, to highlight three women who become very important in my family. Um, Amory and Lenny Katie have been amazing and helping my mother and father over the last past year and a half. If it wasn't for all their hard work and dedication to helping my parents out, I'd probably be in a mental institution months ago. So let's get to the times and life of Patty Peters. I was a little bit of a wise guy when I was little, and I referred to my father as either Patty or Noel since I was 13 years old. The sarcasm definitely comes full circle because now my kids bust my chops and call me Cornelius, which is my middle name. So, Noel was born on Christmas Day in 1943 to Matthew and Peggy Peters in the sprawling metropolis of Killer One, which is about five miles outside of Dana in County Tipperary, Ireland. This metropolis in Ireland had everything a great Irish town needed. A very small school, a church, a candy shop, and a pub. And that was basically it. So, um, Noel used to tell me stories about the hardships on the farm in Ireland, um, you know, walking barefoot to school, miles and miles and miles in the rain. And then when we started going back to uh, Neil when we were younger, I found out that his house was literally a half a block away from the school. <laughs> so, uh, Killer Run was a great place to grow up. There was a huge family presence there, uh, in and around the town, lots of laughs, love, and lots of Ireland. So in 1962, as a 19-year-old kid, he packed up his bags and came to the United States. He was lucky to have an aunt down at Fort Road take him in. He started working um, in the boilers in the schools down there. In 1966, he got notified uh, that he was drafted into the Army. He spent a year in Vietnam and did a year stateside before being honorably discharged. He used his funds from the GI Bill to go back and get a, a degree before the university. And at the end of it, he would say, not bad for a guy with a sixth grade education from Ireland, huh, buddy? So uh, when he returned home from Vietnam, he almost immediately got called by the NYPD Loved the police department, uh, spent a lot of time in narcotics, worked with various commands throughout the city. Uh, so I got a second family to him. He retired the year before I went on in 95 as a lieutenant. Um, when he had just entered the police academy, he was hanging out at the Red Mill, which was a bar down at Jerome Avenue in the Bronx. Some of you may be aware of it. It was there on a fateful night that he met the love of his life and wife for 51 years, Catherine Gilday. When they met, she liked that at the time, she was out dancing on the dance floor. She grabbed a handsome, but very, very stiff and uptight guy out the dance floor and just progressed from there. He was a pioneer back then. For those of you who don't know, pioneers take a blood, uh, pledge of sobriety when they're grammar school. He didn't have a drink for almost 30, it was 29 years before he had his first drink. Um, my mom had missed another glass of sherry after I was born, and he always said, me and mom drove to drink. <laughs> they were married on September 5th, 1978. This bundle of joy you see here was born in 72. And my sister Shaboy, aka the Golden Child, was born three and a half years later. So, what was it like growing up, though, you may ask? One of his most defining characteristics was his incredible work ethic. He moved our family out of Castle Hill in the Bronx and up to North Riverdale. Uh, besides working as a, as a cop for 40 plus hours a week and doing overtime, he also drove a yellow New York City cab three nights a week, and he worked uh, construction for Michael Bryan every Saturday. When he wasn't working for others, he was always working on our house. He redid our house twice. He built a studio apartment. Just all with an insane work ethic. Uh, my sister and I played a lot of sports growing up. And you know, people would ask us, how come your dad never came to any of the games? Never faced us. We would just say he's working as usual. He was always trying to give my mother and his children a better life than he had. Another defining characteristic was his desire for his children to be educated and have a good life. He was always pushing Shimon and I in school very hard. Uh, one thing I remember is no matter how tired he was at work, when he made it home from doing overtime, he would eat his dinner, come down, sit with us, and make sure we did our homework. And he was a bit of a challenging guy, as Shimon will tell you. So Shimon and I went off to college. I started working on Wall Street after college, got bored, joined the NYPD. Although he wanted me to get a job in finance or something different, they built the police department. Um, I, I, I think he was secretly proud that I followed in his footsteps. When I was 29, I was lucky enough to meet Tracy. He got married soon thereafter. He always loved her as a second daughter and said I would have very, very big problems if I hadn't met her. He was 100% right, as right the right thing the boys know. So she won't get a degree in biology from William Mary College and wanted to continue her 
her education to become a vet. She was one of 15 students in North America who were accepted into the prestigious veterinarian program at University College Dublin. Patty was not too happy with her going back to Ireland, and there was many nights uh, she wanted and my father would sit on the front of Super Riverdale and talking about the contract, which was that if she he paid for her to go back to school, she had to come back here. She couldn't stay back there because we really don't have any family here. It's just the four of us. Well, my sister boyly screwed up that contract <laughs> because she landed herself a great husband in Wes and settled in Leonard to start a family. Although my father was disappointed that she would never return to stateside, uh, he was very proud that she married a very good man who was hardworking and generous just like him. He loved Wes and treated him like a second son, as evidenced by dragging Wes to the American Legion every single time that he came here for a good time. So, he retired from the NYPD, worked for another 10 years as a security driver for uh, an ultra-high network individual in New York City. I touched on it earlier about his incredible work ethic, and this job was just another example. There were days when he started at 5, he would get home at 12, take a few hours of sleep, and just get right back. He went out of his way to pay for me and my sister's education and not to saddle us with debt as we were starting in the workforce. I still remember the day, a long time ago, on Christmas, two years after I graduated college, where he gave me a receipt saying your college wish to pay off in full. Um, you know, he did the same thing for my sister. It was just his way, very stolid, never complaining, and he just got the job done. That's what he did. Patty became the doting grandfather as me and my sister had children. Although he couldn't see his grandchildren in Ireland as much as he wanted, he always had them laughing when they, when they visited and loved hanging them around. He was a huge help to myself and Tracy over the years when our kids were young. There were many mornings when I would call at 5 o'clock in the morning saying, Dad, the kid's sick, he can't go to school. Literally, the guy would be at our house uh, an hour later. He had about 15 newspapers and he'd sit there for 12 hours until we came home. Throughout his life, he had a great group of friends, and just too numerous to name from the police department, American Legion. One thing that he loved was golfing, as several of you know. The Gaelic Golf Club was like a second family for him for uh, you know, over 30 years. And he engaged with his one guilty pleasure every year, which was the annual trip to Myrtle Beach. You know, as my mom can tell you, he looked forward to that trip for, for months. I could go on a long time speaking about what he's done and the impact that he's made on so many people's lives, but you wouldn't want to be the center of attention. I'll conclude by stating that he was a great and honorable man, loving husband, father, grandfather, an example for us all and how to lead a good life. If you know him well, you had you know we had another very good friend called the Orange Lady, aka Graham Yang. So if you're out one night this week and you want to celebrate his life, please raise a glass of the Orange Lady to celebrate the life of times. Patrick O. Peters. Goodbye, Dad. We all love you and miss you. Thank you.
What advantage has the worker from his soil? I have considered the task which God has appointed for men to be poised about. But he has made everything appropriate to its time, and has put the timeless into their hearts without men's ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. I recognize that there is nothing better than to be glad and to do well during life. The word of the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, and they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, and reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. When I first came to Pearl River, I was greeted, and they said, Welcome to Pearl River, the most culturally diverse town in America. <laughs> I kind of thought, they said, there's someone here from every county in Ireland. <laughs> it's true. And I was thinking when I went back to Ireland, because of Irish ancestry, not Irish from over, but we went back to the towns that they talked about their whole life long, and they were just not quite the way you expected to find them. But there were plenty of pubs that they talked about, and you identified with them right away. When I was uh, in Staten Island for a while, I was an NYPD community liaison chaplain. And coming up here, I've been for 20 years, they think local police chaplain here with Orange Town. CPR. When I learned to be an EMT on the ambulance, it was cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And you guys know that when you're a cop, CPR is courtesy, professional, respect. But there's an awful lot of things that go into living up to that. Uh, being an EMT, I'm at the house most often after the police officer. The police officer who is trained in CPR is sometimes doing that before I get there. And the many, many challenges that a police officer has, I have gotten some insights into, either responding as a chaplain or responding as an EMT. It's a really special job. It's a special calling. It's more than just an occupation. To me, in, in a sense, it's kind of a ministry to go out of your way to put your life on the line, to put aside your personal comforts, to really work for a compensation that is not really commensurate with the amount of risk you take, and the amount of time you put in, and the amount of energy. But nonetheless, there's a love of what you do, because you do it for other people. And so today we thank you for your service, and we thank Patrick for his service. It's something that we need to stop and say, you know, this is a very important thing that we have in our society. Sometimes it's not greatly appreciated. But today, we appreciate Patrick and all of you who served and have served, because without you, we do not have society as we know it. But also to think about the man you discussed, uh, to think about how he prioritized everything and kind of took care of everything in his place, taking care of family. That's a big deal to try to have high aspirations for your family, to have a lifestyle and a way of life that is better than you knew. And so the, the idea of sacrificing, the idea of putting aside your own personal comforts and the things that perhaps you might like to enjoy in order to take care of your wife, take care of your family. And of course, so many times perhaps as a fellow police officer, he went out of his way for you in difficult times, particularly following difficult situations. To think about all the things he did, serving in the military, working hard with the sweat of his brow to put food on the table, ultimately working as a police officer, and ultimately doing all the things that you spoke about so eloquently. What is it that makes us all special? What is it that makes us blessed in the sight of God? Obviously, uh, Ecclesiastes tells us there's a time and a place for everything under heaven. Sounds like Patrick found time to do the things that needed to be done. He prioritized his time. And he spent the time so very wisely to get with others, not just himself. But the Gospel reading today says every one of us should be careful with our time and how we spend our time. And during the Advent season, we're told now is the time to take a look at our lives, our lifestyles, our commitment to God. How close we are to God, how much more closer we should be, how close we are to our family and friends, how much closer we could be if we work at it. And ultimately, to be blessed in the sight of God is to be kind and merciful, to be uh, ultimately forgiving and generous, 
to be loving, to be Christ-like in the way we live. Because ultimately, imitation is the best form of flattery. To imitate Christ in our lives is to flatter God himself. So today we thank God for the blessings that he bestowed upon Patrick with his obvious service, with his friends, his wife, his children, his family, all the ways that you could connect and can come up to yourselves and share some thoughts and memories. But also, we thank God for the gifts of Patrick's faith that allowed him through baptism to have a relationship with God, to have that obvious and most beautiful thing called the child of God. This candle, by the way, is very similar to the one that would have been lighted at Patrick's baptism, no matter where in the world he was baptized. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Those who follow the light of Christ, ultimately, they find themselves in the light of God, the one who is true light and true light in the kingdom of heaven. This white pall we put on him reminds us of the white garment he wore in his baptism. We're told that our baptism, that we should bring that dignity, the dignity of our Catholic faith, undimmed into the everlasting kingdom of heaven. This altar is very much like any altar in the world, no matter what church you went to, because of this altar, the priest, acting in the person of Christ, allows God to come down upon us and allows us to be personally connected to God through Holy Communion. That's why we call it Holy Communion. We are made holy by our communion with this sacrament. So today, we gather as people who have known and loved Patrick to offer up the most beautiful and most perfect prayer of the Catholic Church, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. We who are here offer up our beautiful prayer for him, that God will recognize in him all of those wonderful things Jesus talked about in the mountain, the kind, the merciful, the forgiving, the loving, all of those things that he now presents before God, those are the treasures of his life. Those are the things that are the open book we present before God at the time we see him face to face. So let us thank God for the gift of Patrick and his life, for the many ways he touched your lives, for the many ways he served even people that did not know him. And let us pray that God be good to him now and find him to be truly blessed in his sight in heaven. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand. The brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, great the seats for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we now join our prayers to his as we respond. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, after receive the light of Christ, scatter the darkness now and lead them over the waters of death, we pray to the Lord. Patrick was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him now into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord Many friends and members of our families have gone before us in the way of the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with their son. We pray to the Lord. Lord Those who trust in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Your refreshment, rest, and peace to all the faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord the family and friends of Patrick seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel their darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for Patrick. Strengthen our hopes so that we may live in the expectation of your son's second coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God, give her peace and heal her souls. Hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives are purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of what was linked to Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs>
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Let us pray. As we humbly present to you these offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Patrick, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes, sir. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Press one alone, he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man, he chose to die, so that your sight we might all live forever. And so in company with the chorus of angels, we praise you with great joy we sing. Holy
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. So gesture of peace.
our brother Patrick, they come to the eternal table of Christ, and those are raised forever and ever.
Order. 